Thank you so much, ladies. I don't know about you, but I have enjoyed every minute that we've been here this weekend. And Sharon, I don't know how I'm going to follow you because <laughs> so much of what I have mirrors what you just said. So it'll be a, it'll be a compliment to it. How's that? Um, I, I was talking to Marie outside. I feel like I'm tying a bow on the weekend, so I hope you see it as that. Um, I have learned from every person here today, and I am going, I'm truly trying to, to keep it in my head. I've written a lot of stuff down, but I'm trying to keep it so I can take it home and remember, because at my age, remembering is not always the easiest thing. Um, but I, again, my portion of this study is, uh, of First Thessalonians, is hope. And um, I thought this was very appropriate because my youngest daughter's middle name is Hope. Um, there are two definitions that I, I found. Uh, one was from desiringgod.org. It's hope, the confident expectation of what God has promised, and its strength is in his faithfulness. I like knowing that it's his faithfulness, not my own, that I have to depend on. Those who hope in him purify themselves. Evidence of our faith is living steadfastly until he returns. And that's Nancy DeMoss Wagamoth. Those two, those two definitions, I thought, sort of balance out this, this uh, that I've written. In the ESV study Bible, the intro notes state that Paul's main purpose was to repair the hope of the Thessalonian Christians in the wake of unexpected deaths of people in their congregation. And I'm hoping that I will help uh, describe that. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. With my job as a hospice chaplain, um, <laughs> I have used this verse many times. Again, things confirm to me whenever I'm given something to, to talk about. Um, I have walked through grieving process with a lot of people who lose their loved one in hospice. And we... Not always are they believers, which is they there is a less it's a more difficult situation, but when they are believers and when they know where their loved one is we can we can share this verse and it be a hope for them um, i in your paper in your uh, booklet that you have, I am a bullet point person. So uh, mine is very brief, but I decided that HOPE would be an acronym, so I'm using H-O-P-E, and uh, this is my be the best way for me to take notes, so bear with me there. I hope it's ho helpful for you. Okay, with HOPE, with, with HOPE, H is the first letter, and we're talking about the Holy Spirit here. Um, Romans 15, 13 says, Now may the God of HOPE fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit again it's the Holy Spirit's power um, when Jesus Christ was crucified he rose from the dead and he ascended into heaven the Holy Spirit was sent to dwell indwell every believer that put their faith in him and this is God's power in us I was listening on the radio the other day. Jeremy Camp has a song, and I wish I could think of the name, but it's the Holy, Sp Holy Spirit in us, and I wish I had given some information because I could have given the words to it. But listen for it, Jeremy Camp. Um, Romans 8, 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. That's Romans 8, 11. And what greater hope is that? The Holy Spirit encourages us when we're down, 
convicts us when we do wrong, reminds us of God's promises, and provides the strength needed to persevere in our lives. I don't know about you, but I need that kind of help. That's, that's very important. John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Um, this brings me relief. I, I, just, I appreciate knowing that I'm not responsible for knowing everything, and nor, nor do I have to remember everything that God has said to me because he, the Holy Spirit will bring it to mind. And he is, I can be confident in that. My responsibility is to apply what he, what he reminds me of, to obey what he reminds me of, and to trust his directions. Romans 5.5 5 says, And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Again, we have this hope in our salvation through Jesus Christ, and we are gifted not only with God's love, but the Holy Spirit's power. Okay, I may be repeating myself, but I want you to hear this. And I, I know that we have a helper, and we can depend on him instead of ourselves to remember and do all that God has called us to do. Okay, second letter in hope is O. We have obedience. 2 Corinthians 7, 15. His affection abounds all the more toward you as he remembers the obedience of you all, how you received him with fear and trembling. 1 Samuel 15, 22. And I have to say that behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. I don't know about you, whenever, when I was preparing for this, I heard this verse about five different places. <laughs> So I had to include it with this. To obey is better than sacrifice. Most of us in this room are moms or have the experience of working with children. And we can all relate to the importance of learning to obey. There's nothing more frightening than having a small child that will not listen to what their parents say to do to keep them from harm. Okay. I was, you were told I have two grandkids, four and two. My two-year-old grandson, Charlie, loves to frighten me. My husband and I often babysit lovingly. And uh, we, were, we were babysitting one night. And uh, while we were there, we play hide and seek. So I'm the one that has to, to find them. And I was counting to 10 out loud. They ran upstairs to Emmett's room, and they were hiding, and I knew where they went, so I was counting to 10 as I walked up the stairs, and I said, okay, ready or not, here I come. I followed into Emmett's room, and I'm looking around, and they had climbed into the top bunk bed, okay, and they were peering out at me like this. I said, oh, guys, there you are. I said, okay, okay, Charlie, you wait. I'm, God, uh, God, God's come to get you. Don't, don't come down. Okay, I have, to, I have to show you how he did. He stands up, smiling at me, <laughs> and falls forward. Okay, see, there's a mom right there. <laughs> I've got chills thinking about it now. I caught him, needless to say, okay. But he, you should have seen his face. Okay. Anyway, that was our last attempt at hide-and-go-seek for that night. Uh, yes, okay, I'm calming down now. Okay. Um, <laughs> this makes me think of what things I may have done, even unknowingly, where God has caught me and kept me from harming myself or others. Think about that. I, that's, I've really had to think about I've got chills again. Um, we, we probably won't know till we get to heaven, um, but I bet you there will be some amazement in, in every one of us here. Okay, we are on to P. 
perseverance. But if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance we wait eagerly for it. Romans 8.25. Okay. Um, I know we can all think of someone that we know that exemplifies the word perseverance. Just think about that and who comes to your mind. Uh, for me, it's my oldest daughter, Meredith. When she was 10 years old, uh, we were living in Indiana, and uh, she was diagnosed with leukemia. She's the oldest of my girls. The other two were seven and four at the time. And uh, she endured two years of chemo and radiation through Riley Children's Hospital in Indianapolis. Uh, um, we were told at that time, and, and, and it's come true, she struggles with the effects from those treatments because it was very intense. But it was either that or not live. So she's thankfully living. Um, she made a decision then, and I can. And my my daughter's not a, a a person of many words. She's she's like my husband, but um, she wanted to be a doctor. Uh, the woman, the, there was a wonderful woman doctor there, and she looked up to her. And she told me at ten years old, "Mom, that's what I want to do." And. <laughs> She is now a pediatrician. Yeah. <laughs> um, I could give you so many stories of things that she overcame during medical school, and one of those I will give you is um, her first day of medical school, okay? They were supposed to go to class. She had finished college, medical school starting. She had to have a, an emergency appendectomy. She had to go to the hospital, and the doctor, Teachers at the school were like, okay, where, where is she? Anyway, she came in as soon as she was better, and long story short, that was for the beginning of her, her medical school career. Um, she had a failed first marriage, and um, these were two examples of her perseverance. Nothing ever kept her from becoming what she set her mind on and keeping her goal focused in her head. This is where we learn how to persevere through the difficulties, through the times we didn't plan, and those interrupted goals. She has this verse hanging in her home, and I can't think of one more appropriate. It's one of my favorite verses, and Sharon shared it a few minutes ago. <laughs> Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And she lives that out. Last year, Meredith had a double mastectomy for breast cancer, two basal cell carcinoma spots removed from her scalp, and a total hysterectomy. As of today, there have been three separate cancers that her body has fought, and three benign brain tumors removed, resulting in the, the cranial radiation she had when she was going through treatment. And she just turned 40. All of this in that lifetime. Oh, I thank you, God, that you have blessed her with a spirit that looks forward and doesn't stay where she could easily become stuck. She's an encouragement to me. Speaking of encouragement, the letter E, encourage. First Thessalonians 5.11 states, Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you also are doing. When I came to the letter E in this acronym, um, while it was definitely easier than O, I still had a hard time deciding which word to use. E's pretty broad, like evangelize, endure everlasting life, and they, that would all have been good choices. But encourage shows that we are called to do, excuse me, shows what we are called to do when others need to hear how we have survived difficulties and held fast to our faith in God and his promises. This led me to the verse describes, that describes hope as a helmet. Okay, I've got a great illustration here. Um, first of all, 1 Thessalonians 5.8 states, But let us who are of the day be sober, 
putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Um, we've heard several people talking about the full armor of God as we've been here this weekend. Um, this, these verses, Ephesians 6, 13 through 18, I'm going to read the whole thing because I'm going to explain what I'm going to talk about here. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, always praying in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Um, this passage describes the full armor of God and how each piece protects the human body. The armor represents the putting on of Christ. In 1 Thessalonians 5, it describes hope of salvation as a helmet. Um, quite a few years ago, I think it was said earlier, I was in Bible study fellowship. I was in a Bible study where we learned about this amazing resource uh, that we believers have, and we, use it, we can use it to face our day-to-day -day battles. And all we have to do is to put it on. One of the ladies in the study shared, and I love this. I, I still remember this. It's been many, many years ago. She shared as she got dressed every morning, she thought about each piece. And then she described her thought process. As she put on her shirt, she thought about the breastplate of righteousness, which covers and protects the heart. Then fastening her waistband or her pants, um, she thought about the belt of truth, which undergirds your frame. She then steps in her shoes of readiness to go out and conquer what her day will bring. While brushing and styling her hair, she thought of the helmet of salvation, which shields and protects the mind. Finally, taking her Bible, the sword of the spirit, which is the only offensive piece, she would sit down and work on her study. Is that not amazing? I just, I love that description. And it uses ex biblical examples in a current process that we go through every day. I really like that. In the first Thessalonians verse describing hope as a helmet, I thought back about her description of using this to protect her mind, her thoughts, and not allowing the enemy to penetrate what she knows to be truth. This is encouraging. And I think of her description often when I'm getting dressed. I, um, Paul t also told the Thessalonians to encourage one another with the promise of Christ's second coming. This is where the term everlasting life comes into the discussion. I did use another E word there, sorry. <laughs> In the book of John 14, 1 through 3, we're all encouraged with Jesus' words. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Paul reassures the Thessalonians that they are destined not for wrath, but for salvation on the day of the Lord. Quoting from the Gospel Coalition website, it states, some think that the Thessalonians were concerned that they would be unprepared for Christ's return. Perhaps the simplest explanation is that these new Christians were questioning their own final salvation in view of the recent unexpected deaths, which would be understandable. Uh, that comes from 1 Thessalonians 4.13. They may have even wondered whether the deaths were an expression of divine disapproval. Whatever the specifics, clearly the Thessalonians needed reassurance about those who had died. 
and about their own destiny at the second coming. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 says, Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always, underlined always, be with the Lord. Further, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 through 11, Paul writes, For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another just as you also are doing. Here, Paul shows us how to be encouragers. So let's be encouraged with the promise of Christ's return and remember Paul's description of looking to the clouds for him. When my husband and I are walking, I, he has a real fast pace, so I have to really keep up. And we'll be walking, and I'm always looking at my feet. And I thought about this. I said, I need to look up. Uh, thankfully, with the leaves changing, I sort of changed my, my perspective, and I did look at the leaves. But that's, that's not my natural thing. I just kind of look at my feet. So this, this one was for me. Um, the enemy would like nothing more than to create confusion and disbelief in whether we're going to be with Jesus when we pass. But he doesn't have the final say. And we know how the story ends. This confusion can create hesitation and doubt, and this can hinder our testimony when we're speaking with someone else about salvation. Jesus will return for his people to meet him in the air and to remain with him forever. If this is a concern that you struggle with, I hope this is an encouragement. Please seek one of us if you need further conversation on this part because we would love to talk with you about it and put your mind at ease. This passage in Titus describes the blessed hope that we wait for. Titus 2, 11 through 14 says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. <laughs> okay, we began this HOPE acronym with Holy Spirit, and that's always a good place to start. Um, how he empowers, encourages, convicts, and reminds us of what is important. Then we learned how important obedience is in our lives and in Charlie's perseverance is not always easy but looking forward keeps us focused and with, then when you look back you see that God walked with you through every difficulty I'd love to hear stories I'd love to hear stories our final letter E in courage shows us that we are to come alongside others when needed to share Jesus' love and how he sustains us through our life we all look forward to the day when Jesus returns and calls his people to him. And I want to thank the worship team for On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand because I was going to read that song. Not to be afraid, I was not going to sing it, but I was going to read the, the words to it because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Okay. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you.